Hello everyone, this is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed. This is episode three, where we are building the water pan for the five by 10 CNC plasma table. I think it's pretty innovative in that it's an entirely welded construction. So none of the bending equipment's required. Um, for some people, bending it might be a better option, but I don't have all the bending equipment. So this is fully welded. Um, it has interchangeable slats. These are made out of eighth inch by two inch flat bar. And that works out really well. And easy, you can either flip them over or just replace them when they need to be. So, um, I enjoy. So I'm starting off with a eighth inch five by 10 sheet of mild steel using a seven inch angle grinder with a flap disc to clean off the light surface rust and get the edges ready for welding. Here I'm loading a three inch by quarter inch angle iron into the Ellis bandsaw. The idea is essentially to make a picture frame for the sheet. Since I need a cutting area of five by 10 and I conveniently can only get a five by 10 sheet, it makes sense to use an angle iron because I can add six inches of um, workspace on top of the table when you count for both sides. The only main disadvantage is the amount of welding required to finish the pan, but with modern MIG welding machines, it can be done in a relatively shorter amount of time. All right, since I know the table's square, I'll probably just position this angle iron against the edge and the other one there and then bring the sheet into it nicely. Uh, make sure everything is good, get everything clamped. So right here is the basic idea of what I was talking about. Just getting the plate pushed up nicely here. See how well that all joins together. A little more adjustment for sure. Um, I probably want to grind some bevels into the angle iron ahead of time so that it can get a stronger weld. So I have all the angle iron clamped down correctly and it is ready to get the frame welded up. I'll readjust um, the clamps and things to make sure the sheet material stays exactly where I want it for welding that. Here you can see that the plate is lifted up a little bit and it's not where I want it flush to the bottom. Here I have the mag switch 600 um, and I'm going to just use that to clamp this down where I need it. So there you can see it pulled it in perfectly flush and I'm ready to get a tack on that. All right, so I just slid the sheet over so that the seam is over the frame that's underneath and I've got clamps all the way down, um, holding both the angle iron and the sheet down. And I have that done on this end as well. You can see the, um, the sheet is over 
the bottom frame and that way it'll hold everything nice and flat. I'll get tacks on all of this and then the tray, the pan, will get slid over and back and I'll do that to the other two sides. So I got the pan here all tack welded up. It is all ready to um, get welded pretty much, except I'm going to grind all the tack welds and get the seam ready for welding. Um, I always find it just gives a nicer looking weld and it's easier to make sure it's watertight. So when you have long seams like this to weld, one of the things to do is to break it up into smaller segments. And as you can see over here, what I'm doing is I've marked out the different segments and um, so this is a direction I'm gonna weld in. So then I can weld like one, um, three, and then two. And even if you didn't jump all the way past one or not, you can just do like one, two, three, four, but then you're always traveling back towards the same spot. So then how the heat travels, it's going to um, help um, compensate for warpage. And so um, I got that just marked out so you can kind of see the idea behind it. Um, obviously as well to help the heat dissipate well, um, you can jump over to like the other side and whatnot and do the same type of thing. Um, and of course fixed is one of the most important things to keep things from distorting and that's why I have so many clamps and got them good and tight. But beyond that, how you weld, and of course the settings on the machine are very important. Some people think like less heat would be um, better, but actually um, keeping it good and hot allows you to have a faster travel speed. And when you're able to travel faster, um, you get less heat input, which in the long run ends up in less distorting and warping of the material. All right, so we're going to move on to the segment where we're adding the stud supports, which these are made out of inch and a half by half inch flat bar. And we're putting these lengthwise across the bed and they're welded in um, all the way around completely so that water doesn't get underneath and, knees and cause rust. And there, you may be asking why to have them. Well, it adds a lot more rigidity since our supports under the table um, have quite a few inches apart. If we were to just weld the studs to the thinner sheet metal, they would be all over the place. They would warp quite a bit. And these keep them really stiff and they support the heavy um, 5 8 inch studs really well. And then the slats will of course go into place. So this works out extremely well. So to avoid warping, I'm getting everything clamped here um, and clamping these ends down real quick with just a piece of wood there in the clamp. Um, I'm going to get everything tacked nicely and then we'll do it in short segments, get it all welded up. I would um, just leave it with tacks because that would be perfectly strong, but the water will get under there and cause it to rust and eventually cause trouble. One of the issues you could run into if you were to do this particular design where there's so much welding is that when you weld things, they expand and contract and they contract more than they expand. And so you can get like here where that you get it um, lifted up. Now, this all can be corrected by applying heat with an oxyacetylene torch in the correct locations and clamping um, Correctly, you can um, correct the, the imperfections that occur from the expansion and contraction of all the welding. So um, definitely you might want to consider if you have the ability to have somewhere where they can just bend the tray, you probably are going to have a faster, better results, but that's not 
available for everyone to be able to do that. I have a stop set up on my LS 1800 miter bandsaw. We're cutting the 5 8 inch pegs and then we're cleaning them up on the 2 by 72 inch belt grinder. Getting the first one's MIG welded in place here. So I'm using a 10 centimeter spacing between pegs and that seemed to work out really nice. It's pretty close to four inches. And the center row of pegs are offset by five centimeters um, from the other row of pegs and that makes the slats um, curved. And the curve in the slats makes them stronger and support more weight and also makes it less likely for you to cut all the way through one the entire length of it unless you happen to be making the exact same curve shape on your part on top. So it should make them last longer and holds supports the material really well. So I thought you'd find it interesting the MIG welding being done here is with a little bit over $200 MIG welder, that's a 3-in-1, does MIG, stick, and lift TIG. And it's pleasantly surprising how well it's doing um, for being such a, an economical machine. The reliability on these machines isn't maybe as good as it should be, um, but while they're working, they tend to work quite well. This one also, of course, runs on the 115 or the 240 volt. So it doesn't matter if you're at a house or in a shop, you have a lot of options with a little unit like this. And as you can see, you can really put a lot of things together with it. I feel much better about this in this outfit. <laughs> So right here I'm doing a small bundle cut of the slats and these are getting ready to be inserted inside of the water pan. So here we're just grinding one side of the weld to ensure that the slats sit properly on the inch and a half by half inch flat bar on the bottom of the pan so that it creates a very flat work area for the cutting surface. So we're on to the segment where we're putting in the drain on the table. So I'm just using a piece of one inch galvanized threaded pipe. Cut it in half so that we'd have a spot to weld it on more conveniently, marking it out. Using a little hypertherm 30 amp plasma cutter for this. Um, cut out the circle, check the fit here, and I'm ready to weld it in place. I'm using a strong hands magnet, one of their smallest, I think 20, pound magnets and that holds it really well conveniently and getting some tacks on it before welding it out and grinding it flush. So here I'm welding a hook onto the pan. This is to lift the pan in the air so we can paint underneath it. I don't want the bare metal laying against the bottom members. 
um, then it could cause rust to occur, especially when it's full of water and there's temperature change overnight and stuff, could cause condensation. So we're just giving it a coat of primer and we'll lower it back down, get it welded on and of course touch up where the welds are done. But this should protect the pan and ensure a long life. All right, so we're on to the part where we're attaching the water pan to the actual table. Originally, I wasn't planning to do that, but because of all the welding, it's just got a little bit warped, so it has to be done. So I'm using a piece of six inch channel, ran right across the whole length with another piece of two inch on top, resting on top of the pegs. We've got good heavy clamps clamping it down on both sides, and that's keeping the sheet metal fully touching all the center braces. And so then I'm just climbing under there and putting some 7018 welds on it. And we'll just be moving this to the next position and doing the same thing and repeating the process until the table is finished and we'll be done with this part of the uh, build. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts or suggestions in the comment section. What do you think? What would you do different? And how do you plan to do yours? So I'm using some red oxide primer paint for the first and second coat and that works out really well. It's one of the best to protect metal, um, but I probably am going to be using a more industrial paint later as well as potentially an automotive clear coat or something just to really protect from the water. So I added just a touch of black paint in with the red paint for the second coat and that way I could um, check my work better and make sure everything came out correctly. Well, I hope you enjoyed part three. Remember to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content and I'll see you in part four.